Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, so today I decided to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is bikes. So I'm going to talk about bike posture and some exercises for cyclists. Um, before I went to PT school, I was a competitive cyclocross racer out in New England in Maine and New Hampshire. And so I uh, spent a lot of miles and a lot of hours on the bike and had a lot of back pain to show for it. So um, I thought I'd pass on some tips and tricks so you don't have to have quite the same issues, um, especially right now. Hopefully some people are able to get out and ride by yourself, not any group rides. Um, and so hopefully this will be helpful for some people. As always, go ahead and shoot me some questions. Uh, if you have any, um, I'd love to address whatever else is going on on the bike as well too. Uh, prior to going to PT school, I was also a bike fitter at a uh, shout out to Colonial Bicycle Company over in uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. They're a great company. So if you're in that, over that way, uh, go buy a bike from them. So uh, I was a bike fitter there as well too. So I've seen, I've seen a lot of bike fits. I've seen a lot of, uh, incorrect bike fits and things that might be causing people pain on the bike so just going to go over a couple of them today um, but if you have more questions too you can always uh, dm me or leave us a message or find us on uh, either instagram or here and reach out and talk to me more about it because uh, bikes are one of my favorite things to talk about as long as pt for cyclists so between those two things i will talk about it forever unfortunately i only have about a half hour today so you're in luck because it won't be forever so uh, first thing I'm going to start with, again, you can either go bottom up or top down. And today apparently is Crazy Hair Day also at uh, DPT. So I'm currently in our gym. We just moved uh, about, I guess, four weeks ago now, three and a half weeks ago now. Um, we've got our own gym space, so we're not sharing with anyone. So we're not, we only ever have a uh, total of four people right now in here. So if you're ever concerned about what's going on right now and being in a busy gym space, a busy PT uh, uh, space, then uh, come check us out because we're actually, we keep things pretty small and really clean here. So again, any questions, shoot some questions our way too. So let's get started. The uh, first thing that uh, plenty of cyclists will tell you and plenty of problems that we often see is that we see some neck pain. So I actually touched on some of this stuff yesterday with my desk posture because turns out desk posture and uh, cycling posture are fairly analogous. So as well as what I'm going to talk about is what I also mentioned yesterday about how our desk posture can also feed into our performance a lot too. So what we're going to talk about first is hanging out here. This is what happens a lot on our bike. Quite obviously, when we're on our bike, we need to be able to orient to the horizon and see what the heck is going on in front of us. The problem with that is oftentimes, instead of being in this position to do it, we end up here in this one, causing this excessive, what's called uh, lordosis here in our neck, and excessive extension as well, too. So what I see a lot of people coming in with is two different things. They come in either with neck pain from this, or they come in with shoulder pain from this, from trying to support their neck um, in this position. Uh, if you remember from yesterday, I don't have, I'm not in my room, so I don't have my awesome essential anatomy today, but uh, if you remember from yesterday, we talked a little bit about some of the neck muscles and what the deal is with why they're so important and what we tend to overuse. So again, you can even see in me too, here's this SCM right here, that's our sternocleidomastoid. That, as well as our upper traps, tend to be the only things supporting our neck and pulling our neck forward in regards to the SCM when we're hanging out in this position. All of our tiny little neck muscles that are supposed to be the ones that are supporting us get turned off immediately. The other thing that happens there is then we start using these big neck muscles and what they also do is they support us with breathing as well. If we can't breathe through here, we start using this, which we'll also talk about. If we start using this, now we've got things working over time here as well that are not supposed to be working or doing different jobs than what they're supposed to do. So the biggest thing that you can do to address this is first of all, just tune in when you're on your bike. If you feel like shoulders are coming up around your ears and you're hanging out in this position, there are several different reasons for that. Um, I'd be happy to look at your bike fit too, come on in, because I could list probably about 40 different things that this could be. But some of the most common ones are oftentimes we see either your reach is too far and you have to hang out in this position or your reach is too short and up and it elevates your shoulders up here. The other thing that often happens and most often I'll see with a lot of people that do a lot of road cycling is that they'll drop those bars, you know, slam that stem super low so they can get super arrow, which is a whole nother issue, but they'll slam that stem down there and all of a sudden they gotta get all the way down here to reach those bars, but they still gotta be able to look up. So now we're hanging out 
right through here. If you notice while I'm hanging out here too, but not from that position, while I'm hanging out here too, look what this is doing to my lower back. We're starting to accentuate this curve as well too. We're gonna work our way down here because this is where I see a lot of the problems when it comes to cyclists. But for right now here, the big things to think about are check in on your reach. Check in and see. Don't you hate when you get a call in the middle of a Facebook Live? All right, so like we talked about, oftentimes reach can be too far, too short, or too far down. Just like anything else, we're looking for just right. When you're here, you wanna make sure you get a gentle bend in your shoulders. Any bike fit that you have, oftentimes one of the paradigms we subscribe to is whatever position you're in, you should be able to lift your hands off the bikes and still be able to support yourself. So if you're hanging out way down here, and as soon as you lift those arms up, you're collapsing forward, you're not doing yourself any good because now even when you're in this position, your core has to work so much harder to support you as well. So that's another thing we're gonna to touch on a little bit later, but some of the big things I see with those um, cyclists and with some of that neck pain is looking at that reach and seeing what is going on with that and why you're hanging out here. Um, I'm gonna keep referring back to my post yesterday because it's actually pretty relevant for a lot of stuff we did to, to, or we're talking about today. So yesterday I talked about doing um, chin tucks and scap retractions. The chin tucks are the world's least attractive exercise. That's where you're bringing your chin back and forward, working on all those small neck flexors through here and working on correcting from here to being able to hang out here instead. You should see a nice gentle bend in your neck, nothing severe like this. And then the other thing I talked about yesterday too are those scap retractions. So working on pulling shoulder blades down and back and relaxing and down and back and relaxing, the same deal. If you put yourself in this position and your shoulder blades can't hold you here, you're gonna start working into this position again too. So those are some of the big things I see as far as upper body goes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some lower body action too. Um, like I said, if anyone has any questions, just shoot them off to me. So uh, big thing with lower body, I'm gonna address what everyone's thinking, low back pain. We see it in a ton of our cyclists. And oftentimes there's two culprits, just like too far too uh, close with those that reach. We oftentimes see too much of an accentuated back curve this way or too much of an accentuated back curve this way. I hang out in here, so I can't even really get to the position showing you uh, that back curve this way, but oftentimes we'll see people that are arched into this position too. Now, if you think about simply the physics of everything, we're looking at gravity pushing down on us at all times. What we wanna see is straight lines within our body. If we start to sag anywhere along the spine, instead of the spine being able to um, absorb that gravity and this pushing down in one um, kind of fell swoop or in one straight line, we see it start to aggregate wherever the weakest point in, where is, wherever the weakest point is, is where you're starting to arch here. So now, if we think about this in terms of cycling specifically, and in uh, terms of performance especially, especially um, this is when it starts to really start to show through and you start to really see some of these weaknesses. Because if you're here and you're trying to pedal from this position, now a couple things happen. One, you've now dropped your belly closer to your legs. So now when you have to get that pedal stroke around, you've cut off this angle, you've also cut off the actual amount of space you have in that hip joint itself. So what we see a lot of times is coming out and to the side in this position. As soon as you see some of that, we got a bunch of things that can happen. You see neck, or excuse me, knee pain, you see hip pain, you see uh, foot pain, because your body's just trying to tell you, hey, this is not the normal way we want to do things. And then you also see a decrease in power, because if you're not driving straight down on that pedal, you're gonna see some of that decrease. So, and then the other big thing we see as well too is any muscle works on a bell curve. So muscles, if they are too stretched or they're too tight, if they're too stretched too far apart or if they're too close together, they can't fire and generate the max amount of force they're supposed to generate. So what happens if you come into this position is now we've increased our, what are called our lumbar extensors here. We've shortened them too much. We've lengthened out our abdominals. And now all of a sudden we have uh, muscles that aren't able to fire um, and get the most power that they can get. So then when we start seeing theirs, we again see, start, start seeing a loss of power because our core is no longer supported. Uh, one of the um, 
one of my uh, guys that taught me how to fit, his favorite saying is, when you're hanging out in this position, your core is no longer supported. When you're pedaling, it's like trying to shoot a cannonball out of a canoe. You have no sort of basis on which to generate that power. So that's one of the most important things too. So I wanna show you one other exercise that I give to pretty much all my cyclists. I think it's really important. It's great for runners too. Honestly, it's good for anyone that does a sport that requires some power behind it. So um, you tell me a sport where that's not applicable and I will be very surprised. So we're gonna come on over here. Let me set you up here. Great. These exercise, this exercise is called dead bugs. More appropriately, it really should be called dying bugs, but tomato, tomato. So I'll show you why that is in a second. So the biggest thing here is we really want to focus on working on decreasing this arch in our back that we see when we don't have proper abdominal bracing. How are you going to do that? Is the first cue is press your low back down into the floor. What that does is if you relax, you should not be able to fit your hand underneath your low back. So what you want you to do is press down into the floor so that no, you can no longer get your art or your, excuse me, your hand underneath there. The other thing you can do as a cue, take a towel, a band, something, put it right underneath here. If you're appropriately engaged here, you should not be able to pull this band up from underneath yourself. So then from here, what we're going to do is legs are going to come up, arms are going to come up. As we do this, abs also engage. The idea of engaging those abs is if you were to do a little cough and you feel those lower abdominals engaged, those are the abdominals you want to keep engaged as you're doing this. So now we've got low back engaged, we've got abdominals engaged. From here, arms come up, legs come up, and you're going to slowly bring one arm out, one leg down. One arm out, one leg down. Back and forth. This becomes a partner activity if you can get one of your friends to start pulling on this for you as you do this to make sure you're not starting to arch. The goal of this exercise is not to try and get your heels all the way down. The goal of this exercise is to maintain and to train the motion you have to be able to hang out here and not let that low back come up. If you automatically start coming into this range and you can't control it, all you're doing is reinforcing those poor motor coordination skills that you're already performing on the bike as well. So, like I said, those dead bugs are one of my favorite exercises. If you have any questions about them, I know this has been a little bit of a short um, uh, Facebook Live, but like I said, if you have any more questions about it, I will talk to you about bikes, bike fits, and PT all day long. So shoot us a message about it, and I'd be happy to reply. Shoot me a message too if you want to hear me talk, <laughs> hear me talk, or maybe someone else about more bike stuff related to PT. Um, I've got a whole wealth of knowledge information on the subject. So um, if not, if anyone doesn't have any questions, then. Uh, I'm going to hop off here for a little bit, but like I said, reach out to us however here on Instagram, send us an email. My email is just Dr. Jesse, Dr. J E S S I E, at the doctors of PT.com. So uh, give us a shout, and thanks a lot for listening. Talk to you guys soon.